Election Day is just six months away. The 2020 campaign may go down as the most unusual presidential race in American history as it presents unique challenges to both the news media covering it and to the candidates themselves. With more than 40 years experience as a TV and radio journalist and the founder of the media coaching company Contacts Media, Frank Sapola joins us now to lend his perspective. And Frank, most people would probably agree that President Trump's reelection will be decided on the job he's doing with the pandemic and the economy. How would you rate him on these issues? Well, absolutely right. And let me first thank you, Christine. I'm a fan of yours and Currents TV, so it's a pleasure to be here. You're absolutely right. Uh, people will judge him by how he is handling this pandemic. And I've said this before, if I were to rate him, and there's a long time between now and Election Day and plenty of time to recover, I would give him a C minus. He must in some way, shape, or form, express empathy and compassion, and it's difficult to do so when you have a pandemic. Sure, and you know, those most at risk during this pandemic are seniors, and when the president won election, he got their votes. Now some polls suggest their support is wavering. How does he win them over for election day? Well, under normal circumstances, what you would do is we would have some sort of memorial service and the president would hug some of the family members and, and you know, express that empathy and compassion in that fashion. It's very, very difficult in this environment when a president has to go out and use a press conference or a gaggle on his way to Marine One to try to express that empathy. That is the issue right here. He needs to be more empathetic and not use these uh, opportunities for what I call an airing of his grievances. That's not what people want right now. I would, if I were handling his campaign, say you need to be more compassionate and empathetic right now, not yesterday, starting now. Right, and you know, we're hearing a lot more from the Obamas. They're getting pressed with the former president endorsing his former VP. And Michelle Obama is starring in a Netflix documentary and they're considered media darlings. So how much power do they have in getting a Democrat back in the White House? Oh, I think they have a tremendous amount of power. Look, it's not fair to rate a president unless he's out of office at least 20 years. <laughs> I'm a bit of a presidential historian, mm -hmm. but I would say he's probably in modern times one of the most popular presidents. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Biden needs him on several levels. He needs that blessing from the former president, which he has received already. He needs the African-American vote, which President Obama, former President Obama can deliver. So, I mean, what they are doing and what they will do between now and then will be important. Again, under normal circumstances, we'd have some sort of a rally and Obama would put his arm around Biden to express that he's with him. It's difficult again in a time of a pandemic. Right, we're not going to see that happening. And the Biden campaign is dealing with something else, a sexual assault allegation that goes back to 1993 when Biden was a U.S. senator. How do you think he's been handling that so far? Well, whether these accusations are true or false, and there's been a lot of uh, speculation and a lot of discrepancies in the stories, I would say the thing that he is doing is correct. He's denying it. He says it never happened. And as I mentioned a moment ago, Christine, six months in a presidential year is a lifetime. We don't even know what happened a month ago. Can you even remember what happened a month ago? It's good to be in front of this, put it behind him. Unless somebody comes forward with a tape, a video, a photograph or something, I think this is not an issue heading into the election. All right, and in the 24-hour news cycle, there's a lot more opinion shows out there where certain news organizations seem to lean to one side of the aisle or the other. Is there such a thing as objective journalism anymore? Yeah, you know, this is a question I get asked a lot. I told somebody yesterday, he said, what do you do for a living? I said I was a television reporter and anchor for 40 years, and first thing he said was fake news. Now, I, I abhor the, the, that expression, but putting that aside for a moment, I tell people, look, do not plop yourself in front of a television and listen to one side or the other. And essentially, it's commentary, Christine. It's really not news at times. A lot of it's commentary. I tell them to read. Get a couple of newspapers you really trust. Read through them and decide for yourself because a lot of these issues are complex and you just can't put them on a bumper sticker. I mean, you need to read about them. When I'm a bit confused, I read newspapers I trust and I determine what the answer might be in my own head. I don't sit down and listen to an echo chamber, whether it be left or right. I, I find out what the facts are and I decide. All right, some good advice. Founder of the media coaching company, Contacts Media, and former journalist, Frank Sapola. thanks for joining us. Thank you, Christine, a pleasure.
If you're watching Currents News on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button and then click on the bell to get instant updates about all of our newest content because we are putting your faith in the news.